Hey everyone, this is Andy from Single Track Magazine, and I'm here with Mathieu from Hi. Motion Ride, a French suspension manufacturer who uh, is making this rather cool looking linkage fork. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, like, why would I want a linkage fork when a telescopic fork is so good? So, why? The answer is very easy. Yep. It's about anti diving. Uh -huh. With a telescopic one, when you break, you dive, you change the whole geometry of your bike, uh, you are not stable and you lose uh, something like 80% of your capability absorbing shocks. It's, it's not normal, it's a problem. Yeah. We did that to answer this problem. This is the, the only fork able to, to be 100% anti-diving. So if, if you go into a steep section of trail, and you pull your front brake, you're not going to move down. Exactly. You're just going to sit still. and All your travel available in all situations. So, I mean, how did you come to the design? How did you decide to make the fork look like this? You, you know, we, we saw a lot of linkage fork in the past, but it was from engineering thinking. Yeah. OK. And we know they, they, they have some problem with that. We didn't choose the position of the axis. It's the only solution, mathematic solution to get an uh, anti-dive uh, fork. Yeah, so you so didn't think, oh, it has to look like this. No, not it has to all. look different. You've, yeah. you've taken a blank sheet of paper designed exactly. from the ground up, and you've gone, th basically, this is the way it looks, because that's the only way it can work. Exactly. Right? If okay. you see um, another shape of fork, mm -hmm. that means it's not 100% anti-diving. Yeah, because there are a few possible. other different kind of linkage forks. I mean, I'm sure some of the viewers will remember for example, the Gervin fork yeah. that was on a Proflex. And that looked different to this, yeah. but that wasn't an anti-dive fork at all, was it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, that, and, and that actually had a different wheel path. Yes. Whereas the wheel path on this is Exactly, is because the same. there is two things we, we wanted to, uh, to keep. It's the standard uh, way to mount it. The stereo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. OK. And uh, the, the same axle path as a normal fork. The, the goal is to, uh, to make people uh, able to uh, to have the same ripper than uh, with the telescopic one. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't change nothing about geometry or uh, feeling you can have on yeah. your bike at the beginning. It's just anti dive. Right. So I mean, this fork is first of all remove anti dive. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, you could have changed the axle path. You could have changed the the uh, offset but you wanted to keep it as s similar to a standard fork as possible. Exactly. Because like, if you change too much, people won't know yeah. where the benefit is. We are used to, to ride on that, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. cool. So, I mean, with this, there's a, I mean, because it's anti-dive and it is a linkage fork, it's kind of cool because you're not really losing any wheelbase, are you? Mm. As the, the fork travels through its, its you know, full travel, you're not really shortening the wheelbase of the yes, bike either. Yes, exactly. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I mean, uh, for the first, 50% yeah. uh, of the travel, mm -hmm. it's exactly the same as a telescopic one. Yeah. But after, as we can do what we want, yeah. we choose to, um, to have a vertical uh, travel. Yeah. Okay? And that's good for the uh, bus wheel to keep the same and to keep the, your bike stable for big shocks like uh, jump or stuff like that. You yeah. don't uh, feel... Uh, Does it feel squirmy yeah, as you land? When you yeah. touch the ground, you know, yeah. you're very stable. And yeah. if you can actually notice it a little bit on the bike. I mean, on a bike with a, a regular telescopic fork, you push down and, and the wheel sort of sucks up underneath you. Yeah. Whereas this is just li lifting up in front of you. It's, yeah. it's very, it looks very interesting. Yeah. At the beginning, it's the same as a telescopic one. Mm -hmm. And at the, the half of the travel up, it comes vertically. Yeah. yeah. So you have the anti-dive feature. And then on top of that, you, when you're hitting terrain and you're going faster and faster and faster, you're not losing that stabili stability exactly, yeah. because you're yeah. not shortening the wheelbase yeah. either, are you? Yeah. And uh, I mean, and, and although, again, it looks very, very radical, it's not changing the geometry of the bike either, is it? It's not affecting anything like not that. Not at all. We the have same a standard, age, yep. yeah. the same offset, yep. uh, everything uh, stays the same. Yeah. Yep. And uh, this version is a 160 millimeter travel, and it has the same crown to axle as a, as a Fox 36. So exactly. you could put it on your bike and no anti-dive, no wheelbase changing. Yeah. And no maintenance. No maintenance at all. There is no ball bearings. No, okay. no ball bearings no, in here no at all. No ball bearings. Right? It's um, composite bearings, mm -hmm. more uh, bushing. Bushing, okay. yeah. It's special one. It's not uh, like uh, we were used to, uh, to, to see on the, on the bike. Yep. It's um, 
uh, more complicated for us for the production. Okay. okay? It's very pre precise uh, stuff. But when we do it, yeah. after, you don't have to do nothing. No maintenance, no oil, no grease, no play, no screw, nothing to do. Wow. It's quite exciting, isn't it? To yeah. think that... Just have fun. Yeah, just, just yeah. ride your bike and never clean it. It is possible if you want, yeah. yeah. But if you want to clean it, you can clean it with a high pressure water, no problem. Another wow, like you yeah. can high pressure hose this clean and it won't affect it at all. No, no, not at all. So we've got composite bushings in here that don't wear, they don't yeah. need lubrication, they no. don't produce play and you can't take it apart either, can you? You can't remove these pieces if you want no, to. Effectively, um, the frame is, um, is hydraulic pressed yeah. Uh, for the product during the production yeah okay and after you, you can't do any nothing on the frame yeah. it's uh, just a lifetime uh, it's all yeah. Yeah. I mean if if there was an issue um, uh, you you can still do it yeah but it's not something you would do at home but nothing to do really yeah. and if you I mean you might be able to see here on the on the video we've got these uh, end caps yeah uh, and although they look like that actually removes the pivot that's not the case it's just you cosmetic isn't it you can remove it with yeah. uh, special tools mm -hmm. just to uh for the design for the change the color if you want yeah uh, at the moment we have four colors but it's just for uh, the design yeah yeah so i mean like the i mean originally the idea was just anti-dive but already we're hearing no maintenance no changes in geometry as well. Yeah. There's quite a lot of advantages here. Yeah, and uh, there is a lot of other advantage as it, well. Yeah, I mean, if we look at this actual suspension medium, we have this uh, carbon uh, beam here, which yeah. is uh, the wave. Yeah, the wave. So this, uh, this is a carbon wave. Now, am I right in saying that? So this is the spring. Exactly. And this spring will suit any rider weight. Exactly. So. How does that work? I mean, like, because okay. I'm a lot heavier than Hannah, but yeah. we rode the same spring and it worked fine for both of us. Okay, you you can see that the the spring is uh, it's curved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we we're not gonna curve it again. No, more. no. Okay, we're gonna pull on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you make it uh, function, you you're gonna pull on the blade, and the result is that the um, the curve is progressive one. Okay. Okay. So if you uh, tight it with the little uh, we have screw a there. Adjuster yeah, here preload the yeah. exactly. Uh, you change the stif stiffness. You can feel so yeah. it's uh, okay for every uh, every pilot. Yeah. Every so you don't weight. need to worry about. Uh, yeah. There's no air or anything in here. Th no. We'll get to this in a moment, but that's not an air shock, as no. some people believed. There's no air. There's no nitrogen. There's Nothing. no coil springs to change. No. It's just this one spring, and the only adjustment that you need is preload. And it it does sound fantastic but it, it actually does work we, we've you know we've got a, a good test over the past day and it, it has yeah. really really worked um, and another thing you mentioned as well uh, generally when we've posted about this fork in the past everyone's thought of this being under compression and it's it's being squashed and kind of worried how much uh, stress these carbon fiber uh, threads can take but that's not the case the, yeah. th that's the natural shape of the spring and what in effect is happening is it's being straightened out back to its natural shape. Exactly. So there's no there's no pressure there, is there? There's no, no. stress. The so more the, the bigger shocks are, uh, the the better is the. So the this blade. is this is actually relaxing. Yeah. It, it, the th yeah. The threads are relaxing under under load, which is pretty impressive. And and if we like I say if we look at the other side, this is not an air shock. It's just no. a damper, isn't it? Exactly. One person damper. Okay. No air. There is no um, internal piston inside. Mm -hmm. um, there is two problems on the normal uh, dumper. Yeah. The friction yep. okay, and overheating. Mm -hmm. The friction, it's about um, air pressure inside. Yep. Okay, so we don't have air pressure inside. And about um, high pressure hydraulic seals. We don't have seals. Yeah. Okay, it seems... Uh, I like the way you yeah. design things. It's like, okay, <laughs> the problem is this, so let's not put it in. We we just, just it. take it away. Yeah. We don't need to fix it. We just remove it. And to remove high pressure seal, yeah. we we have to be sure that there is no high pressure. So we have uh, atmospheric pressure technology yeah. to make sure there is no high pressure inside. Leak is not possible with our technology. It's so you don't possible. need to worry about leaking. Impossible. Right. We don't any. We don't have seal. Right. So <laughs> no leak. Wow, okay, yeah. so uh, one thing uh, you may notice with a telescopic fork is when you first get onto the fork, 
you have to kind of break the seal yeah. to get it you know, working. And that stick chin uh, can affect the small bump yeah. performance of a fork. And that's because of high pressure seals. It needs to keep exactly. the air in, it needs to keep that oil and everything yeah. in. But because this is a low pressure system, the seals don't really need to do so much. So no seal, no, no, no friction, no stiction. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. So this is very good for sensibility, uh, grip, yeah. and comfort, it's really, uh, really uh, good. And the other point is about overheating. Yeah. Okay. It's a problem because it changed uh, the, um, the, the viscosity of the, the oil. Viscosity of yeah. oil and mm -hmm. so the behavior and it's not good for lifetime of the of the hydraulic uh, jumper. So we, we have a, a cooling system inside. Yeah. Okay. Half of the oil is used to cool the system. So it's not possible to overheating. So the same behavior all the time. Yeah. Okay. And no maintenance as well. So uh, again, no maintenance. So we've got yeah. So it's, 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 you know, it's quite, I mean, especially for us where it's usually muddy and rainy, like yeah. to, to have something that has no maintenance, no seals to worry about, you can pressure wash it. Yeah. It sounds like the dream, basically. Yeah, it, it's done for that. Yeah. For the dream and just pleasure to rain. So on top of the, uh, you know, the, the pull action, the low pressure system, and obviously the, the, the oil circulating to cool yeah. down. Um, we've also got an adjustment on here, as you, yeah. but not really as you'd find on a regular fork. Again, it's it's different again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bit different. We we wanted once again doing something very simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> so you have in the the first part, you you adjust the ribbons like a normal one. Okay. But we have a second mod. Okay, the firm mod. If you want to uh, to get a fork very very uh, firm, very uh, stable uh, for a jump. Uh, bike park stuff like that yeah. you just have to turn a bit more and you low you choose sorry low medium high and you have and that a just changes the firmness exactly of the it's fork. totally uh, uh, the change the, the the behavior it's uh, two fork in uh, in one excellent yeah. so if we just uh, take a look at the damper here with this green line here and that's the the center setting for of the yeah. fork and if i turn it anti-clockwise yeah that affects the rebound only so only the rebound so the further anti-clockwise you go, the faster the rebound faster, is. Yeah. And personally for me, I just had it one click and it was amazing for anything. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're hitting small bumps, big bumps, jumps, rocks, roots, just one click of rebound was the only adjustment I had to do. Um, what I, we didn't get a chance to ride because we didn't have any smooth trails to tr test yeah. it on is the high, is the uh, firm mode. Firm and mode, that's yeah. if you go to the opposite side of the green line. So if you go clockwise, past the green line and that actually firms up the suspension and that's great for bike parks, dirt jumps, exactly, pump yeah. tracks. Yeah. It'd be perfect pump for this. tracks, stuff like that. People who want to get very, very uh, um, firm. You, you need forward. the support. Yeah. yeah, you need the support. Very support. Yeah. yeah, excellent. All right. Um, okay, so uh, before we go, we, there's different tire sizes, wheel sizes, sorry, yeah. and different travel options. Yes. So this is the 27.5, and it, it's okay for tires up to 2.5 inches. Exactly. And what travel options can we have it's in this? Uh, from uh, 150 to 170. So it's it's a big fork. Yes. It's a proper it's more for enduro, enduro trail. Enduro. Right. Yeah, excellent. Enduro. And if you have uh, 29 inch wheels or plus tires, do you exactly. do a fork? You have a fork uh, too? Exactly. Until um, three pound, uh, three. Uh, for, for the tire. Yeah, the width. A three, how do you say? Three inches. Inches, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and uh, the travel is from uh, 140 to 160. Excellent, so yeah. if you're on a 29er or, or a plus size bike, exactly, yeah. you can also go for one of these two. And in the future, I believe you're gonna do a cross country fork and a downhill fork? Yeah, exactly. Excellent, so, yeah. but no information about that at the moment. Not yet, but okay. uh, yeah. All right, and, and uh, last few details. If, uh, if people don't like black and green, is there any other option? Yeah, for, for color. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a green, blue, orange, a dark orange. Like uh, this? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, black, black and titanium. Uh, yeah, you can see the, um, the color on the, the site, website. Excellent, yeah. okay. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's the uh, Motion E18, Motion Ride Fork E18, yeah. anti-dive fork. Lots of benefits there. Um, I'm going to be doing a full write-up about this, and also um, have a you know do a bit of a write-up about my first ride impressions too, yeah. which uh, really good, really really good. Uh, but check out Single Track World for more information and the full write-up. And uh, yeah, remember to uh, subscribe to this if you like this video, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks good. very much, Matthew. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.